everyone, 3 d Hero here, and welcome to this week's Anthem Lore video. Today, we'll be looking into the legendary hero of the Ogre of War, Helia Tarsis, and theorising how powerful exactly she was when she was alive. And there's quite a few things about her that I would say would make her the most powerful human being at all times. So let's look into what we know about her. She was the only sole survivor of the group that tried to escape the Urgolf but ultimately were caught and presumed massacred by the Urgolf. Little is known as to how she managed to survive. She met Gaurad, the Chronicler, and Arden Vassar sometime later and created a small but ever-growing resistance group to fight back against Urgolf with an army to surpass them. Once the names and acts reached across the human settlements, and more, more and more humans took the risk of escaping the Urgolf and other threats just to find heroes and so-called resistance group. To further combat the threat, Arnavasa created the very first Japanese suits for the faction he used to fight back against the Urgolf Empire, with Heliotarsus being the first to use in combat. With the success of the suits allowing humans a golden opportunity to fight back, and Helena being marked as the golden icon for humanity's sake, the Urgolf were determined to kill Helena and all the rest of the group to make them pay for what they've done. While leading many raids and rescue missions against the Urgolf, Helena worked closely with many well-known and documented heroes such as Sanadin, Letriel, Magnus Strahl, and many many more. She also at some point had the Dawn Shield crafted to allow her to fight and protect herself from entering a cataclysm, and also had a sword that supposedly allowed her to use his abilities and had somewhat of a connection to the Anthem. Supposedly. Sadly, her last major battle against the Urgolf was near the now fully created Antium encampment, as she was brutally injured by an Urgolf commander. Although she managed to kill the commander and fight back against Urgolf until they retreated, she sadly succumbed to her injuries, and the Legion of Dawn was soon to dispatch into her own factions while carrying on the will of Helena. So as shown, Helena was a very important figure in her lifetime, to the point of being revered as a kind of godship to the people, with the world of having poems, stories, buildings and statues all dedicated to her and her faction's goals. So in terms of how powerful she was, there are a few key points we can look into. Firstly, her survival skills. Although not properly expanded on, she was the only key member of a Doom group to survive the Urgolf onslaught, which then led to her hatred of the Urgolf and aimed to fight back against them. We don't know for sure how old she was when this happened, but from the time frame of that happening to her, finding Ardem and Goward, it was either a long time surviving out there on her own, or a short time, as that's what the past group was going to anyways, to originally meet the two resistance fighters. She was also capable of leading a Chimera beast away from a young Midorian, while still understanding her new suit's capabilities, and has faced a number of Urgot threats out in the field, so she's definitely fought her fair share of survival. Secondly, her leadership. She didn't get the title General for nothing. Helena is what you would expect a true General to be like in the field. She led many campaigns out in the Urgot, like I previously mentioned, and always had a plan to counter the Urgot if things got hasty on her end. She was always looking out for her forces, with rallying speeches to give hope for all humanity to see, and always made it her effort to remind everyone that no matter who you are or what you do, you're still helping with the war. With her courageousness out in the field, you can see why many people rally behind her to support and fight in the cause worth fighting for. Thirdly, her javelin. As mentioned before, she's the first user to try and test out the new javelin and see what they were like. Even Arden Vassar, the creator of the suits, didn't know what they were capable of. And yet, thanks to them, it gave humanity the tools to fight back and ultimately create a new future for humanity to thrive in. Although her javelin was the same as everyone else's suit, her one had the ability to use a dawn shield, which supposedly protected her from entering cataclysms and other certain events, and was one of the key components for us to use in our situation. But apart from that, her suit was a standard Colossus variant, which made her very hard to kill, also packing a large punch. Lastly, her sword. And this is something I've wanted to explore a bit more into, as it's an interesting area that doesn't get a lot of talk about, and yet this may lead to some future developments for us in the game. So here's how the lore goes down. Four Millionus lived atop a mountain too steep for humans to climb. From there, he sent giants and terrible storms like a dreadful fiery wind. A day came when Tarsus declared that people would suffer Four Millionus no longer. She brought the most trusted of our flying legion to the lair of the mighty creature. For three days they battled amid fearsome lightning until Tarsus brought Forminus to heal. She pried his thunderous voice from his throat and forged it into a sword, the voice of heaven, to sing a song of triumph. 
The voice of heaven whispered to the general, and with his guidance she forged a new ambition. She gathered a legion at the old sanctuary as the enemy, cunning and cruel, surrounded them. As warriors filled the valley below the mountain, they laughed and cheered, certain that no human could escape. But Tarsus planned well, and once the Urgot committed their greatest forces to the battle, she unleashed the voice of heaven upon them. The mountain shattered as it sang and the Urgot were buried beneath waves of rock and earth. Now say what you want about this counter, but I would love to see this rendered in game as a cutscene as everything from the battle against Forminus, turning him into the sword and then using his powers against the Urgot just sounds so ludicrous but interesting. So the sword that she supposedly crafted from him had the ability to call down the voice of heaven, which I would say is most likely part of the Amphibic creation, but weaponized, and now in the general's hands. Remember, it took her and the legion three days of non-stop fighting to kill this beast, and then straight after went to work using the weapon to counter the Urgoth that were planning to attack Antium, so she and the rest of the group would most likely be exhausted and battle damaged from the previous fight. Now, what happened to the sword is unknown, as it's not even mentioned anywhere else in the lore or after the spell of the group, if it was hidden to keep away from the Urgoth, humans, or if it just disappeared after use, as it had some kind of limited duration. We don't even know if this folktale was even real at this point, as no one has chipped in to say if it was even possible at the time to weaponize something that was part of the Anthem creation. Only time will tell supposedly, and maybe we'll actually get a mini based weapon in the game as well. Hopefully. So conclusion, how powerful was Heliotarsis? Answer, very powerful. Thanks to her and her key leadership and heroism out in the field, we managed to defeat or supposedly defeat the Urgoth, and bring back peace and order to humanity. Her sacrifice led to many other individuals in the world to follow her path and strive for humanity to never be slaves but to be masters of their own fates. If she never did the thing she did before she passed, I don't believe humanity would ever have a chance to be more than what they were deemed to be by the Urgoth. In fact, I don't even think humanity would even exist at this point. So that concludes the end of the theory video, I do hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to see more content like this, then please leave a like, a sub, or even share with other Anthem lore gurus. And also be sure to follow me on Twitter if you're interested in Anthem and Destiny content as well. The link's down below. Once again guys, thanks for tuning by, and I'll see you in the next one.